little bit of an acid-base chemistry. Um, you know, we don't have a lab in here, so I wanted you guys to get an idea of the kind of things that we see in lab. Um, so today I have some hydrochloric acid. Oh, we did go over how to name these, right? Um, and, and then here I have a, uh, some saturated sodium carbonate. It's a so one of them is an acid, one of them is a base. And then I have water. Um, the thing is, uh, the things we have to deal with with the reality of chemistry is that we actually can't see the chemicals a lot of times. Like just picking these bottles up, if it didn't have a label on it, I would have no idea which bottle was HCl, which bottle was carbonate. So we have to have some way to see this. And uh, the main way that chemists do this kind of stuff is use indicators. So there's a gazillion different indicators out there. There's actually, I think we have like eight different uh, pH indicators. And what I have here, this is a universal pH indicator. Uh, let me switch over. The, let me pause this for a sec. Okay, by looking at uh, indicators. So what, the way this indicator works is that it'll change color as a function of pH, basically. Um, generally, how pH indicators work is that uh, they'll change which state they're in at a different pH range. You guys might be learning a little bit about that in your biology courses. And what's that? Red cabbage juice is actually a way you can do this, but I. I I got the fancy uh, red cabbages only have three colors in it, but this one has like six different colors in it. So we'll see what we have. So I'm going to put some uh, HCl in here. And then uh, uh, in general, the colors, the way they work out is uh, the warmer colors, like your reds and oranges are typically are your acids. And then your cooler colors, like your blues and purples, greens, that kind of stuff, are typically alkaline or basic. So since this is HCl, um, it's just going to change color here. And it's basically just taking on the red color. And I'm just going to add enough in here so we can actually see a really deep color. So, And you, you guys will learn about this a little bit more in 121, but uh, how dark something is is a function of how concentrated it is. So if I add a little bit more in there, it gets darker. All right. See if you guys know. <laughs> so it has that deep red color because it's pretty aesthetic. Um, this chemical itself is actually not very dangerous. It's, it's hydrochloric acid. It's pretty dilute. It's only at 0.1 molar. And uh, one of the things that I try to help out with in lab is learning when chemical phobia is good when it's bad. So I like for you guys to have an idea of what you're working with uh, rather than going in with the blanket <coughs> fear that you're afraid of everything. So you can have, and then there's a case where you're, if you're too comfortable, that's actually when the most accidents happen in lab is when you're too comfortable. And then I've seen accidents happen when people are too careful. Like they're, they're being so like inhibited by their fear that they can't perform. But anyway, I'm adding a little bit of water in here. Uh, it's not going to change the pH by a significant amount. We're just diluting it. It's still going to be acidic. Um, but it should change color if I add some base to it, right? Because this is an acid base indicator. We need a little bit more height in there. And now the fun part. So notice here I'm, I'm not wearing gloves because I'm not afraid of these chemicals at all. I think the most thing I'm afraid of is getting this on my skin because it'll stain my skin for about an hour. Until I have to scrub it off with uh, some bleach. But <clears throat> All right. So let me go ahead and just carefully pour this in here. I, I want to uh, angle this so when I pour it in there, um, since it's saturated, it'll fall to the bottom. And it, it'll do that if you're careful with this. You kind of angle it a little bit. And just pour it in. You see any color changes? Mm -hmm. You said it's saturated with water. Yep, uh, so it's, it's a, a saturated solution. It's more dense than the uh, acid solution. So it should just fall to the bottom. And what ends up happening here is we get some cool colors happening. Uh, mostly in the middle right here. Is that green? Uh, yes. What kind of colors do you see in there? Mm -hmm. Green and yellow. Orange. Seeing all kinds of colors there. Yeah, so it's the, I like to call this demo the pH rainbow. So you, you're, you essentially get the whole uh, color gradient inside of here. So you, you, you have a uh, pH gradient and you also have a density gradient in here. And the only reason why we're even able to see it is because of the indicator. If the indicator wasn't in there, it would just be a completely cl uh, clear colorless solution. We wouldn't have any idea what it is. So I was saying here that the base was uh, 
Uh, saturated sodium carbonate. Does anybody by chance know what the little bubbles that are forming right here? I'm not sure if you can see them very well. There's little bubbles up there towards the top. It's actually uh, carbon dioxide. So it turns out that uh, car well, we're going to go over this in a lot more detail later this semester, but it turns out when you have carbonates, they are your CO3 2 minus. If you treat them with acid, they quickly become carbon dioxide gas. So that's actually why uh, one of the examples of carbonate you have in your homes is baking soda, that's uh, bicarbonate. That reacts with vinegar, acid, and you get that bubbling, that's uh, carbon dioxide. It turns out that carbonate, uh, rather than bicarbonate, bubbles a little bit less because we need two moles of hydrogen per one mole, uh, two, one mole of the carbonate. So you basically need more acid to get it to turn. So pretty cool. One of the classic demos there.